Professor Omid Wali, Fulbright Scholar, Professor of English and Peace Studies, University from Afghanistan. We welcome you, sir. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God Almighty, who gave us the life into whom we return back. His Excellency, Professor Rahul Karad, respected panel, I should say highly qualified and well-disciplined panel, to whom it's very difficult to address for me. And respected audience, I would like to present the gift of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, to you, which is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It means, may peace, mercy, and blessing of God Almighty be upon all of you. My speech is not academic. It's not professional, and it's coming from a pure Afghani perspective on the perspective of the Gandhian theory of truth and nonviolence, which is highly relevant theories and principles for, for the current ongoing conflict in Afghanistan, which has lasted for over four decades. Coming exactly 1,853.96 kilometer away from the mountainous country Afghanistan to a society where democracy and peace are considered universal exam examples of acceptability into the ge geography where the great main of intellectual and thought Gandhi was born, who devoted his entire life for peace and contributed the global village with the concept of non-violence. In terms of nonviolence, we coming from the Afghani perspective believe that Gandhi is even famous back in Afghanistan with a great theory of nonviolence, which he says that Gandhi, that nonviolence is not the weapon of weak, it is the weapon of the bravest and the strongest. Being the progressive student of English language teaching in peace studies, once I was making handouts for my class teaching paragraph writing to my students in Nangarhar University, I came across a very interesting paragraph about Gandhiji, which is always, which always interests me to read it again and again. The paragraph is like this. The assassination of Mahatma Gandhi shocked all Indians in every corner of India. The minorities lost a man who always stood up for them. The poor lost the only person who was working towards real equality. Even his enemy felt a great loss in his death because he never hated anyone, big or small. And his death was indeed a great loss for the entire globe. To come into a specific discussion, the two basic principles or ideals that guided Gandhi's life were truth and nonviolence. For him, Truth was God the Almighty. In realizing this truth as God was the ultimate purpose of life, he expounded the proposition that truth could be realized only through nonviolence. Truth is the end and nonviolence is the means. Gandhi gave his own definition and explanation of nonviolence, which transcended conventional understanding of the concept. For Gandhi, nonviolence was not a negative concept meaning non-injury or non-killing, but a positive one, which means love in the sense of selfless service of one's fellow beings, which included the entire creation. The essence of his argument is that one must try to part practice non-violence in thought, word, and deed, and to organize all life activities on its basis. And that would bring an unprecedented and revol revolutionary changes in the human life. Ladies and gentlemen, Afghanistan being a part of the international community has been suffering from terrorism for the last 40 years, 
which grew a much higher hit rate among the people, even they are ready to kill one's brother. High graph of illiteracy and poverty and proxy war between the great power of the world are considered the silent and hidden philosophies behind the conflict in Afghanistan. While this has changed since 2002 when Afghanistan received a government with an international identity, now we have Gandhian and his companion Bacha Khan, the Pashtun, which is also known Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, his companion. The thoughts of truth and nonviolence in the curriculum of primary, secondary, and higher education in Afghanistan. These teachings really help in the reforming, reforming the mentality of Afghan nation in terms of a peace-loving, holistic society. The people of Afghanistan want peace and hate war because we lost approximately 1.5 million innocent lives just in war against the Soviet Union. Afghanistan is the land of true servant of God and the best friend of Mahatma Gandhi, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, known by Bacha Khan. After 18 years of war since 2003, between the Taliban and the Afghan government, now they realize that they can get get to their goals by, a, by peaceful means, which is coming to the table of talks and negotiation. And the credits of these and other peace agreements, such as the Aceh and the Republic of Indonesia, the agreement between Aceh and the Republic of Indonesia, and etc., go to the great men of the era who established a platform for peace and nonviolence for the world. In short, I believe that Gandhiji is not, is not belong to Indians only. Instead, he is universal property. We follow and practice Gandhian theories of truth and nonviolence. I am sure that there will be peace everywhere and none will kill innocent human being if we follow these important theories and principles of life. I would like to sign off with the great message of the Holy Scripture Quran which says, if you kill one innocent human being, regardless of his or her religion, it means you kill the entire humanity. If you save, on the other hand, if you save the life of one innocent human being, regardless of his or her religion, it means you save the entire humanity. This is the message from the Holy Scripture Quran. And as a Muslim, as a true Muslim, I do believe that there isn't a single religion on the face of, face of the earth which promotes violence. It is all the problem of interpretations and the problem of corrupt politics that use religion as a source of, as a source or as a source of violence and so on and so forth. Finally, I would like to thank my fellow Rotary uh, Peace Fellow that we used to be in Thailand for three months, uh, Dr. Melin Pandey, uh, who is the pro vice chancellor of the MIT World Peace University uh, for making it possible to come here and learn many more things from the great personalities and the great scholars. So, and I will carry uh, with great insights back to the country with the message of peace. And further, I come up with the message of MOU from Nangarhar University in the Ministry of Higher Education, where we can sign in the future and work on the MOU in the, in the educational exchange program of Nangarhar University and other major universities of the country to establish a platform for the exchange uh, between the students of MIT and as well as uh, the Nangarhar University. Thank you very much.